I'm Peter Brown from Tiny and Sons Glass. Tiny and Sons Glass was established in 1978 when my father and brother and I were at 575 Washington Street in Pembroke. We're certified and qualified to do all your windshield replacement and repair. Tiny and Sons Glass is a community-based business. We have 12 mobile vans that come to you. If the weather's bad, you can come here to the shop. We have a nice waiting area, TV, Wi-Fi, kid-friendly, pet-friendly. We also can move about 15, 20 cars a day through the shop. Perfect for you when the weather's bad. So come on down to Tiny and Sons Glass if you need your windshield replaced or repaired. Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINYS. Just call. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Board of Health meeting. Today is February 12th, 2018 at 7 p.m. I'd like to welcome our newest member, Matt. Matt, I don't even know your last name. Newman. Matt Newman. Welcome aboard, Matt. Before we begin with our agenda, I'd like to read our chairman's statement. Please note that this meeting is being made available to the public for an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of this meeting. All comments made in open sessions will be recorded. And first on our agenda, we have a gentleman from Outback Engineering here to discuss some variances on 39 Furnace Colony Drive. Uh, my name is Jeff Youngquist, I'm from, uh, the actual president of Outback Engineering. Uh, this is the system we are proposing. Uh, first off, I'd like to uh, let you know that we have notified, notified the abutters. Okay. So, because we're asking for variances. Do you have and, a list of the abutters notified? Uh, it's just, there's only two. Okay. And, uh, so so there, is there a list? There's not big, yeah, a no. big straight. Huh? <laughs> one of them, the, the direct, only one that we have to notify is right next to us. Shell, you want to take a copy of this? I'm sure you can have it. Okay. We don't. I know she's here. Okay. I'm the one right next to us. Okay. That was the only one. That's the one that's being affected. And your first name, so I won't call you Mr. President. No, Jeff. Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Welcome. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Yeah. What do you got for us? Okay. Uh, this is a uh, two two bedroom uh, single family home. It doesn't have a basement. It's a crawl space. And what we are uh, doing is replacing the, set, uh, the septic system, which is going in the front yard. Uh, my son did a perk test here in November, I believe, and uh, everything is you know, it's forming in great. Everything that we try to put the system in the front yard because the backyard has less area. Uh, this is a very small lot. It's only 5,513 square feet. Very uh, small. She has the bigger one next door. But in order to do this, we had to uh, have some local upgrades to the system. And I will read them off to you so I get them correctly. Uh, the applicant is Gene Gatsby, has had to file for a permit from the Pembroke Board of Health to upgrade the existing failed septic system. Uh, you might add this is in the betterment program too, right? Yes. She's in the betterment program. Yes. Uh, a public hearing will be held February 12th at 645 Board of Health, located at 100 Center Street, will discuss the following waivers to be requested. Per 310 CMR 15-405 L and H, a reduction in the minimum separation of groundwater from 4 to 3 feet in the soil with a recorded, a recorded perk rate of 4 minutes per inch. This will allow for a reduction in the mounding of the front yard and neighboring existing drainage patterns to remain unaffected. Stormwater runoff will not be directed towards uh, directed towards the existing home, nor be blocked by the grading required to propose septic system trapping and runoff along the existing foundation. Basically, if we didn't request it, this would have been up another foot, and that would have trapped the water. And this way, we kept it at the surface level it is right now, and basically, it goes the normal pattern what it normally does. And we will not be flooding or directing any water to uh, Denise over on the right hand side or the other way. Uh, it'll be just everything else is just 
just inside, the system is inside the driveway. The only thing that will be in the driveway area is the e-box. You're going to have to dig up any of the driveway? Just a little bit of it. Just a little bit? Yeah. How much? Uh, probably about four feet, three, four feet. Okay. How about the length? Uh, just in this area right here. It has to come right here. This is probably about 10, 15 feet right here. And what's the driveway made out of now, Jeff? It's the uh, asphalt. Asphalt, yes. Okay. Have to oh. Sheila, yes. Do, does Dave my did he send any work back on this with any suggestions? Uh, or no, we? he accepted it as. Uh, Is it Dave? He's our engineer. Yeah, I know Dave. Yeah. I know. Um, just I've been around here. I've been around here so long. I know where we're I just want to see what he's he's written. There he is. That's, one yeah, that's his inspection page, and that will tell me right there. So he puts his footnotes down at the bottom. If he has yep. Okay. All right. You ready? I'll let you read that first. Okay. 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 Where did you send him for the company? He's the MP. Yeah, I noticed when you were talking, you said your son did the purchase. Yeah. Is he with your company? Or is he? Yeah. She's yeah. not the homeowner. No, no. You know? no. Okay, so, yeah. so you, you, when you said your son, he yeah. works with you. Yeah. With oh, yeah, company. I got, I got okay. 27 employees. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Jeff, did the system fail at Title V? Thank you, Gary. Mrs. McDonald, we would like to see you again. Bye, Bob. It's good to see you. Did you want to see my husband's questions? <laughs> no, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I have my own. My husband sometimes talks. He's, he's just a... Okay. Yeah, moving on. Like 7.20, so we want to get going. Next, we're going to look for the health agent's report. We're going to have our administrator, Sheila, Gave me an order to do. I was just executing it. All right. So the health agents report. So general update is first on the agenda for uh, the wolves stand or the field house. Okay, okay. Sheila, before you continue, I just want to check with that. Does Matthew have a copy of this? Um, I believe he just got the my update right here. Yeah. Yes. So this yeah. is what we're working yeah. off of. Okay. This is what we're going off of right now. Sure. Field house has been a little I bit of a that. problem for. Okay. A little bit of a time. Okay, Sheila, go ahead. <laughs> Say that again. Uh, yeah. you know, it's tough. So, uh, as you know, the field house has been in a few times. Uh, this is keeping a, a running record. You know, it says January 18th, the 12th, uh, 12th, 6th of December, January 18th. And so today, uh, she's talking about that. Um, she can get calls almost daily complaining about the restaurant. And that they have to go outside to use the portable, to portable toilets and the, the trailer. And they don't like it. Um, and then we say, well, you know, we are working with him. He's got a, a, a fixed timeline to fix it. The only other option we have is to shut them down. And uh, most people say, well, I don't want to shut down. Where's my kid going to play basketball or soccer or whatever it is? So, um, I, at our last meeting, we said we wanted to see a contract. He said he had it the next day. I emailed him the next. I called him the next day. I didn't get anything. A couple of days later, I emailed him. And then at the end of last week, I think I mailed it out to you guys. I got a copy of the contract. I told him he could redact the financials. So he has the contract. Today I got a call from his installer. It's um, let's see, it was Pastor. Pastor Ray, Pastor Ray, excavating. I believe they're off the cape. But anyway, he's coming in tomorrow to take his installer's test. He says he's worked in town before, but I couldn't find a record. He's going to take the installer test, pass the test, or pull a permit to be licensed to work in town, mm -hmm. and then he'll pull the permit, the actual installation. Uh, I told him he needed to, because it's a big job, and it's, yeah. it's probably going to have to be done in stages in order to keep them working while they're doing it. So he's going to get in touch with me to try to schedule 
various inspections that have to be done as they go along the bottom of the tanks, uh, bottom of the leaching fields, and things like that before they go. Do you or the health agent know when the work is about to start? If you have sure. to pull the permit sooner than later. Yep. I don't know, you know, again, it depends on the weather. As long as the weather's good, they can do it, but I don't know how. Um, how that, it's not, you know, residential, they're down in two days. You know, they open the hole up, they take the stuff out, yep. and, they're, and they're done. Yeah, it's going to be more than that. Is Do I think it's going to be the six, be six months? I, I hope not. Well, I, I think when we've discussed the woes then, um, there's been a pretty, a pretty consistent theme in terms of when either, when you are speaking on behalf of the health agent, the number of calls. They're clearly not subsiding, but do you feel that the number of calls that you're getting are, are growing? Or no, they're pretty static. I mean, not, there's not any more. Um, we got a call from one, <laughs> one person called and said, well, the people are rude. <laughs> and we're like, oh, I mean, that's not a health issue. That's not a health issue. But it's, the thing is, is we're going to be coming into springtime pretty soon. And when we get into wet and muddy season, we're going to run into some more problems. Mr. Fine, Mr. Chair, what would you think if we were to get started by developing a list of what he needs to take in what order and giving him the two weeks with each within our meetings to comply? You're talking about a series of deliverables? Yes. Okay. Um, well, what I would like to do, or my, my, my initial reaction to that, you know, the health agent has been working, I would say, diligently mm -hmm. with the owner of the field house. So right. um, that is something that I will take under advisement, okay. and I will have a conversation with the health agent, and we will uh, perhaps put that on our agenda on the 26th. I'm just feeling at this point, if we start setting some timelines, um, then we might be able to move this along a little bit faster than the way we're, we're yep. advancing at this point. That might be one strategy. I mean, it, it, it is a personal business, and he, and he has a right to do what he, how he can proceed how he wants to do. The Board of Health will be mindful of the concerns that we've got from oh, the citizens. Without a doubt. So at this point, we're going to move on. I will have that discussion with the health agent, and that's something that I will take under consideration. Fabulous. It's a, it's, it's a suggestion, and we'll see. We'll look at that going forward. So I have a question for you. This system that he wants to, that he wants to put in. Yeah. Is it similar to say, um, if you have a boat, a boat, a boat, and you have a tank, and you, you know, eventually you have to dump the tank out from from the bathroom. So are these is this type of system that he's talking you're talking about here and it, does it have to be pumped out yes it does yes it does uh, is it a tank so that, uh, do they go to so is it almost a trailer and basically everything's going into a tank and that tank has to be eventually dumped out i mean uh, pumped out well, this is a good, i'm sorry you can you can fill me in just so just so i make sure you know what you're talking about this would be a complete septic system okay so yes it's a tank it's going to have to be serviced um, but it's a complete new system that is going into here. The other one is a complete failure. Mr. Newman, yeah. are you asking what's in place now? Yeah, basically. Yes, the rest the, the restroom trailer is a tight tank that's serviced by the company that bought the trailer, as well as the porta parties are serviced weekly. And, and the health agent goes up and makes sure that they're keeping them clean. Right. When the system goes in, it's going to be a, a full-blown system with the leaching field and pump chamber. I believe it's going to have pump chambers. I, I can't remember what the fuck. Yeah. With uh, large tanks. Right. Okay. It's going, that's to, it's going to be able to handle. Uh, what do they say like 900 gallons a day or something. The capacity for the, the people. Coming. And that's the proposed three hundred fifty thousand uh, dollar new system. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. No, that's that's what I want to make sure. So, okay. in right now they are using that. That's where the complaints come from, that they're actually using that trailer and the different... Uh, I just, they complain about the trailer, but they're more complained about, we ask, is it dirty? And they say, no, it's not dirty. So, I mean, it, it's functioning as it is supposed to. They're just upset that they have to leave the building. Okay. And go into yeah. the trailer. Sure. To go outside. All right. 
and, and you'll have an opportunity to, to read up of the situation. I mean, I'm not going to speak for the business owner and call it a PR nightmare, but it, it, it's been a troubling circumstance for the residents. I mean, we've been getting calls on this sure. continuously, and, and I think, Sheila, your point that people haven't, the, the young kids haven't to go outside and use the facility, it's problematic. And they're looking for a solution. You know. Okay, that's good. And then Wilson, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for that explanation. She's very good sometimes. Okay. Moving on, Sheila. Sometimes. All right, so Pepper Hospital has been on our agenda for quite a while. We have moved to super staff settings. Um, Pepper Hospital has a failing septic system. They've done some minor repairs to um, keep it floating, or, or not floating. <laughs> it. Um, but it's a large wastewater treatment facility. It's actually like, you know, not on the scale of the MWRA, but it's 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 up there. So it is such a large system that it's it it's actually controlled by the state. They do the review of the plans, and um, they have uh, they're awaiting their final approval. They, however, have had a chance. Um, they, they, they do have a failure of their number two BioClear tank, which they have taken out of service. And I think Lisa said there's three of them up there, so they're just diverting. Instead of using three, they're using two, and, the, and they're monitoring it. Um, it was a, I'm not sure what exactly a bioclear tank is, but there was a, a structural collapse inside the tank. There was still water flowing through, but it wasn't working the way it should be. So they diverted it to the other two to keep it. Do you up. know if all three tanks are, are being used? Um, these almost seem to me that they were almost like galleys, you know, that in a, in a leaching field. They were calling them tanks, but I, I could be wrong. I could double check with them. Okay. Uh, they checked this to Google. Yes. My such a nice opinion. So the bottom line, though, we're still waiting for the Mass Department of EPA for right. approval. And the DEP is aware of the problem, the new problem that they had. Yep. And they did contact... Uh, Pembroke Hospital and CC Glenda, we said that they're aware of what's going on and that it's you know the fix they put into place is acceptable to the community. Okay. Is there any way, um, Sheila, we could get a report uh, on what the consisting issues are and what the Commonwealth um, is is looking at to go forward with it, the DEP? Just in the future so that we can get some kind of idea. Uh, what do you mean, what the actual failure was? Um, yeah, what actually they're working on. So the, the and I'll look up BioClear tank so I can get some kind of an idea. But what exactly is the EP? The failure of the number bio claim. Bio, two BioClear tank which have been taken out of service. Is that the only issue with the with the failure? Well, I believe they've been pumping the system because if my understanding originally it was the leaching field that failed. Right, right. And that so was a couple of years ago, or a well, year and a half. I want to say it was a year and a half. It's been since up and so it's within yeah. a year and a half. Okay. Uh, so they're uh, they don't have outbreak in the field, you know, behind the hospital. Where right. The, the leaching field is there's no longer. I do not believe there's an outbreak anymore. So either they're pumping it regularly so that it doesn't even get to the field. Okay. Or um, they've done a quick fix of the you know, they can add stuff to the field so that If you could have um, the health agent just identify with the remaining the, the remaining problems, um, just so that we're appraised of what's going on. I know DEP is involved with this in the Commonwealth, but I don't think it would be a bad thing for us to know what's going on. So as you well. want the remaining problems, right? Yes, the remaining fixes. And, and, and more of an explanation. Explanation of the bio clip, right? What that apparatus is? Yeah. If she could get us some, um, I mean, I'll look it up, but if it's a technical thing, maybe she could help give us a little more information on how it works. I'll give you a call this week and let you know if I understand it. Okay. Yeah, Sheila, uh, just echoing Ms. McSweeney's comments, you know, criticism of our health agent. The issues of Pembroke Hospital have been going on for quite some time, and and I too would like a little bit more of a detailed explanation. And it's not your responsibility, but I'm looking at the report here. It's a very small paragraph, and 
you know, I, I have complete confidence that what what should be should I have be the done. Plans here. Yeah, yeah, no, I saw that in the report. Okay. What else you have for us, Sheila? Um, so, we, nothing really to discuss, but we have, um, there's a meeting upstairs tonight for the 346 Washington Street. Uh, every department has been made aware of, uh, that's the old ship tech. Dan Smith is moving, wants to go up there. Um, there is a butters that are uh, against it. And so um, there's been like a three prompt attack from the abutters as to uh, what Mr. Smith can do up there. So unless so this goes through planning board, we, we have a 50-50 whether or not we're going to see it. You know, keep yep. the ears open. Yep. And, um, Office activity is starting to pick up slightly in foot traffic, uh, although rice, license renewals are, are complete. There's a couple that we're chasing that didn't put in their license, so we'll be fine with them. Um, and then uh, there's a lot, a lot of phone calls, foot traffic with regards to housing issues. It, you know, the spring's coming. They're getting ready. The, the real estate market is about to break up again. And so people start thinking about what do I have to do to put my house on the market? I hear this house might go on the market. What do I have to do if I want to buy this house and put an in-law? What's that going to take? You know, so, like that. Okay. They're keeping busy. Yeah. So this time of the year, usually a lot of people want to put their houses up on the market when the kids get out of school so that they can be placed. Yeah, put it up now so they can move. And then when the kids are ready for school, they're... That's nice stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she's done some inspections. Um, mostly, um, we got we got a livestock complaint over on West Street. We just lose chickens. Um, the the, the, the com person that's complaining lives on West Street. The chickens live on Center Street. They back up. Uh, Lisa went by. He, they said they, they said he was free ranging. When she went by, they weren't free ranging. But whoever lives on Center Street is a tenant. So the uh, landlord was notified, like, that's in it. Well, livestock is not registered. I'm trying to figure out where on Center Street to West Street. Well, West Street comes off, right? Yep. Right before. It's, it's, it's after Furnace and. It's like. The yeah. I, I, so and you probably go down to Bryanville. So. Yeah. So if you were going to head, when you take the right on West from Center, the house backs up to a house on Center Street. The house on the left backs up to a house on Center Street. Okay. And the house on Center Street is the house with chickens. Okay. But it's not a rooster complaint, so we should be happy. Okay. And that's good quiet, too. It's very easy to street. Yeah. Um, again, she goes by fairly quickly, um, fairly often. I send her up to see uh, the wolf's den, make sure that they're kind of clean and all that. That's it. I know the fight, well, I think we talked about before, the fight department went up. Last, before the last week, mentioned that last week. Yeah. So, it's good. That's it. All yeah. right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to new business uh, under general discussion on the agenda. Develop reasonable missions and attainable goals for the Pembroke Board of Health. Now, I know some time ago, our health agent Miss Cullity, she maybe through a slight brainstorming with our board but a little probably more so on her own she came up with a list of items that the Board of Health might want to consider looking at making some changes and in, in any maybe livestock regulations do we want to update things with septic tanks so kind of jokingly man I was actually referring to them as the gang of 13 now the list has changed it's grown it's gotten bigger I'm still calling it the gang, the gang of 13, but I want to move off of that. And what I'd like to do is do a little bit of a reset. So I'd like our health agent to take a look at those issues, number one, uh, and in her professional opinion, see if any of those have dropped off, if she would like to add any. But what I would like to suggest to our health agent, rather than just having a, a list of all the items, I'd like her to categorize them. You know, and I broke them up in the following. Um, and I wrote uh, 
septic regulation oversight, number one. Number two, public health and safety. Number three, public sanitation. Number four, emergency preparation. And finally, number five, animal inspection. That's just my suggestion. So we animal can- Animal inspection or just livestock in general? You can put livestock in general, livestock. that's fine. So what I'd like to do is, however number of issues remain, you know, I want a health agent to take another look at those. We'll look at the list, we'll recategorize them, and then I think the three of us as a board can do a, not a better job, but a different job at what of the items we want to tackle first and go forward. Um, I think in the past, one of the concerns that I had as the clerk on the board is we would have an issue before us, we'd discuss the issue, vote the next week. Now, I'm certainly not looking to draw out the process, but I, I'm almost more in favor of week one an issue being presented with a report from our health agent and that report might be done through you the second the second week having a, a discussion on that topic when we've had time and then the third week voting on it so in the past it's really been a two-week window and i feel that two-week window has occasionally handcuffed us mm -hmm. so my goal is not to draw it out a third week but my goal is to move the process forward and close these issues a little bit better than we've been doing in the past. I, I don't know if that will work. No, I think that's a wonderful idea. I think um, the information for us to be able to absorb the information, to be able to ask questions, to be able to resource to the office and to ask questions, anything that we need that um, might block us during our conversation, get any clarity so that we can come in here and really have a good conversation about where we want to go with a certain issue. Um, I, I do believe, I, I think the time is a good thing for us to do. We don't want to make any hasty decisions um, and to certainly give the respect and the time that these residents deserve. I think, I think that's a wonderful point. Good. Thank you. Thank can you. I make a suggestion? Yes, you can make a suggestion. In addition to the health and aging, you know, going over the rules, uh, please feel free. I mean, if you guys hear things out there on the streets, so to speak, or in the trades, you know, we went to the uh, we went to a conference for the MAHB, yeah. you know, things like that. So, you know, throw that this way to, to put it out there for us to discuss. I, I think the first step, and, and, and clearly, and maybe I didn't echo echo that comment, Sheila, very well, but. I think once that list is put together by the health agent, I think all three of us, even our newest member, will weigh in on that report, and we clearly may have issues to add ourselves. It's not a, it's not something that I was looking for the health agent to write up and then we'll address. You know, we'll, we will all contribute right. to that list. So, so basically, as far as the business in the past, as far as the way things go and have been done, when you have an issue and you discuss it. You're basically saying when an issue arises, then you just, it comes up and the following week you talk about it more and then is it left that you don't resolve it and then that's where you're coming from and then you want to, that's why you want to do this? Or? Depending on the situation. Yeah, I, I, that's why I'm wondering past, because I'm all for when you have an issue or you have something, you discuss it and then it gets finished and done. We all want to see that. So is that what your goal is? So if there's an issue, say, that you've had or we talk, discussed, you want to see it come to fruition and finish, and then we move on to the next one. And that's your goal? Or? I would say yes. My goal is by giving us an extra week, Matt, yeah. that it will give the opportunity for some board members, myself included, to feel less handcuffed and less making a hasty decision. Okay. So I, I think we will actually, by giving us an extra week, we will be able to move through that list a little more quickly. Okay. That, It'll that. give us our time to do our homework in between time so that we have knowledge of it and then we can have a healthy debate about the knowledge that we perceive the issue to be. Mr. Norwood, it's not necessarily a, a, a particular problem, it's more of a policy kind of guy. Right, that's what I'm trying to get. Is yeah. what, what has been the policy? So like we talked, you know, one of the things was should we raise the age to purchase tobacco? To 21. That was one of the things that was on the list. You know, and we they did you know did some research, presented some stuff. City and towns are already done it. Which way do we get the state's going? Talked about it a couple of times and then voted. Okay. So it's things like that. It's not necessarily like what should we do about the wolf den. It's more like policy. Thank you. 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 Th
that, that clarifies it much better for me. So thank you for that. She's a great arbitrator. <laughs> Okay, moving on, our next topic, future meeting schedule, days and times. That was something that I put on the agenda. Okay. We are scheduled to meet two weeks from this evening, which is the 26th. We normally meet at 6.30 p.m. Under, ten, under our circumstances this evening, we're a little bit different because we had a joint meeting with the Board of Health. Next, our next meeting, which is on the 26th, and you guys might want to mark this down, I am rescheduling the time to 5 p.m. two weeks from tonight, at 5 p.m. as opposed to 6.30. Let me explain my rationale for doing so. We have a health agent who works for the town very knowledgeable and committed health agent and since August our health agent although not required to the meetings has not been present so we've had our health agent not present for the past five months earlier this week I visited our health agents boss the director of the divisional Division of Municipal Inspection, so the acronym for that is DMI, of which the, the health agent falls under. So I had a conversation with the director, and I asked him to, in lieu of our health agent attending the meetings, for him to come to our meeting, as he is our health agent's boss. We've had some little bit of turbulence, and we've had some changes, as one of the re one of the effects of some of our turbulence is you are now a member of the board. So my goal is to have a resource here. We are, and I want to be very emphatic and clear, we are an autonomous board and we were elected to make certain decisions. But I have requested that the director of this department, our health agent's boss, attend our next meeting. Now, in full disclosure, my goal my goal is to have the director here at each and every meeting until such time that our health agent returns to our meetings. So that may require a time change in these meetings. I'm certainly, I'm not going to dictate, you know, I, I did change the time for our next meeting. I would certainly like some input. You know, I'm trying to work with Mr. Thorne so his schedule will allow him to attend these meetings. He does have Board of Selectmen meetings that start at 7 p.m. So if it were up to me, and it's not, but I'm, I'm looking to change the time of our meetings, I would say, I'm not going to say temporarily, but you know, I need to see how things shake out. So I, I'm, I'm hoping or thinking, at least until our elections in May, that I would like to have Mr. Thorne present at these meetings. So I want to send it out to the two of you. Um, less about a discussion about him coming because I've asked him to come as acting chair but in terms of the time change if that's something that you think could work for you so I'm, I'm thinking about and we can mull on it but I'm thinking about Monday evenings at 5 p.m. whereas we currently meet at 6 30. Right. But I think it's very important that we have just someone here that if, if we need a little direction in terms of the parliamentary process etc etc. Are you comfortable with five? Does that work for you, or is that put you into a... Uh, I will have to look into it. Um, you know, my job is actually, it is noon time to eight. So... Noon to eight? Yeah. But I, well, I, you know, in planning over the next couple of months, I was going to be able to work it into it and then possibly figure and schedule out for the night to a meeting, okay. which is fine. So off the top of my head, I could probably say, for the next meeting, I would make sure that I would accommodate you for your okay. idea for that, and then we'll have to work on that. Um, my question is, you talk about the DMI director. You've mentioned that, and then you mentioned Mr. Thorne. Okay. That is, that is one and the same. So Mr. Thorne is not only our town administrator, he currently has the title of director of 
GMI. GMI, Matt, is yeah. the Division right. of Municipal Inspections. I thought it was Department. Depo okay, it might, it I might be. be wrong. Well, it has, has of it. all the three words, if I got that one wrong, I'm okay with that. So it might be the Department of Municipal because Inspections. Because the way you were explaining it, it sounded like to me that the I, I knew his title originally, but I had never heard this one before. Yes, this came So up. that I thought you were talking about he is director of uh, Mrs. Cody is going to be uh, here, and that is someone from the state, not Mr. Yep, Lee. nope. It, I'm, I'm glad to clarify. So, okay, so that answers that question. So Mr. Thorne, as the director of the DMI, is Ms. Cody, our health agent's superior. Okay, so that answers. And, and I have requested that Mr. Thorne come to our meetings, and I'm trying to accommodate his schedule. Okay. So if if you get some information in terms of your schedule, you could actually speak to Sheila. You can communicate with her. Absolutely. And she, Sheila will communicate yep. to me. No problem. Okay. Gail, what are your thoughts on that? I'm fine. Okay. No, so. he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, good. Up, upcoming issues. Our next meeting, which is on the 26th, <coughs> Mr. DiMazzo, he will be coming to discuss our livestock fees. So one thing that I would ask the board, because we spent we spent some time on that. so I Like three or four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so I would like to ask both of you to just be familiar with not only what our livestock regulations or fees were, but what they are now. So we have a I very healthy discussion. Sheila will be able to help you with all of that. She'll no get problem. you the livestock book. She'll give you the livestock pricing. She will tell you the change that we made. She'll abreast you on that, all of that. Okay? No problem. She's no a very problem. nice lady, except if, if she hasn't had her coffee. I will flood you with um, just kind of a, a, a general comment, um, and you were both in the Board of Selectmen's, you were across the hall when I spoke about our previous chair, and I would just echo the sentiments. Um, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Ms. Bagney. Uh, she was the chair, I was the clerk, so I have assumed the role of acting chair for the next nine weeks. Um, what happens when the elections come and we reorganize the board, that's a discussion for another Absolutely. for another day. Sure. Um, so I'm looking for input from both of you. You know, there were many things that were done very well in the last year or so, and there are things that I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel, but I want to make sure that we can uh, move forward positively and have a very healthy, engaging nine weeks. That would be wonderful. So. In the, in the other term of this, uh, Mr. Fine, uh, Chair Fine, um, we need to do uh, an org so that we can, a reorg so that we can make um, Mr. Newman an, an official clerk. We need to... Well, not an official clerk, but as, as far as... An official member or not, the official member or not. Well, I so believe who's he's taking your minutes? I believe he's an official member now, yeah. okay. I, I believe. In terms of, and, and this isn't on the agenda, so we're not going to discuss it the evening, even though I'm going to throw out. In terms of what other reorg has to be done, whether we name a clerk or not, I'm not sure on the parliamentary procedure, so I'm going to table that for our next meeting. Okay. And I will have some information whether we have a clerk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So for now, I'm going to put that on our agenda for the 26th, okay. so I can be better informed. At five o'clock. At five o'clock, that's correct, Matt. I'm pretty sure, it's, uh, if you would just get into the Mass General, but I'm pretty sure that um, if for us to go further, that we have to have the set board. So if you would just make sure of that, that everybody's position and title needs to be yep. set prior to moving forward for us to be able to operate with late. See if we can get that out of the way. And then I'll give you that. We'll do. And with that, welcome aboard. Thanks, and I was going to also say, Mr. Chairman, that um, you will get that. Thank you. You can call me Matt. Uh, I realize it's the first night, but you know, we, we can 
you know, work together and call each other by first names. And, you know, it's, I'm fine with that. So. Okay. Well, okay. when, you know, in proper pro protocol, so, if you ever want to look up uh, Robert's rules, yeah. you know, you can call me Gary, but I am Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. And, yeah. and any questions that you right. have, go through the chair. Right. So I understand. That's a not an right. ego but a Roberts rules and, right. and we will follow that. Right. So when we are meeting on when board. we have a formal question, I say Mr. Chairman. That's correct. But I mean when we are in discussion, you could add Matt, you have you know yeah. the question. Yeah. Correct. You don't have to say Mr. Newman. But if that's your choice, it's yeah. that's healthy fine. healthy debate I encourage, but we're not going to get into a uh, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that we keep this uh, clean. Thank you. Thank you. So on that, I ask, does anyone have a motion to adjourn? I'll make, a, I'll make my first motion as a member to a motion to adjourn. At, uh, motion to adjourn at what time is it? Eight. 7.52. 7.52. Oh. Okay, so uh, let, let's give a nice clean motion. Let's eight, start. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn at 8 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Adjourn. See you men later. <laughs>